Supposing you've got a scene already set up that you want to convert to a true ambience render and this scene's come from say an earlier version of Bryce and you don't really know how it's been set up so let's pretend this is the scene as you can see it renders very quickly and let's look at the elements in this scene we've got this glowing green ball that's lighting the inside of these we've got a light source somewhere from the sun up above and uh, if I check in the wireframe we can see all the objects if I select all objects find the select all there we go everything's there so there are no hidden light sources outside it's all here in front of us and the sun so uh, having looked at this situation then we know that everything we've got here is in front of us what can we see well we can see that this green light source is managing to light the inside edge of this queue here and here and here and you would expect there to be some shadows there so it looks like this isn't casting shadows and that makes sense because this object is solid and so it, it wouldn't if we look at this uh, sphere here this this object's casting shadows so the light wouldn't be able to get out of that if it wasn't uh, if I edit the light now if it wasn't set so it doesn't cast shadows so if we put cast shadows on there which would be a more realistic situation it, now the, the it can't get out well it can't get out as well it does seem to be getting out a bit but that's that's because now now okay then oh, that's raised the question why is that how can the light be getting out when it's inside a solid object so this immediately raises suspicions that something a bit crooked is going on here so if we go into the sky lab sun and moon we can see ah the shadow intensity has been turned down this is this is to allow light into the shadows because the lighting setup is very basic so if we turn that up to 100 percent now we can see that no light is now getting out of the sphere and these shadows well these shadows are more intense but these shadows on the ground aren't so where are they getting their light well to make this glow we the ambience uh, the global ambience color is is driving this material so look in this sphere see we see yes we've got ambience in here so that's another thing to check what role is the ambience playing in your scene so if we change this to a horrible black pink color that isn't in the scene anywhere because who would want that in a scene then you can see that everything's glowing a bit so now we've got a bit of a dilemma we want this green ball to glow as it should for the effect but by the same token we don't want all these other materials to be responding so it's a bit of a trial but what we're going to have to do is modify the material so if we identify things that are the same we can we can we can change them together so like uh, there's the ambience in the material it was quite common to find ambience in materials from uh, from older scenes so you can see now that that's re increased the shadow intensity here and uh, ah here's another odd thing that might occur this object here is not casting any shadows at all so what's going on with that well this object if we look in the material it doesn't seem to cast shadows and the reason for that is we have to look in the material options here shadow casting has been turned off so we turn that back on so now we're getting a shadow from that and all these three appear now to have the same material including this disk uh, the sphere is different so if I select the sphere and change the family for that so it doesn't get affected I can use the family grouping here to select all those materials together and get rid of the ambience and now we're getting somewhere close to where we want to be okay so we can see now that is properly dark it's not being influenced by the green light in there because the green light shut inside but this is still light again another trick in the to to get some light in the shadows in very basic lighting setups is to use this sky dome color so if we change this also to something very striking we'll see what things are being influenced by that so now we can see that this color is a direct light from above that doesn't cast shadows because it's lighting inside this area if it's directly above that would be in shadow so this also wants setting completely to black so now we're getting really intense shadows in our scene this is a better starting point for the true ambience effect the last thing we want to do is turn off the sun so we can see now disable the sun what we've got so what we've got now is just this sphere which is being lit by the uh, global ambience 
there and, and being turned green by the material effect within that sphere. So at this point, now we can turn on the effect. So we're going to render options, select premium effects. I'm leaving it at 16 rays per pixel to improve the render performance, but there will be noise. You have to accept that. Turn it up for the final render. Check true ambience. We don't need reflection correction. And uh, we want TA scattering correction selected. So we'll just see how that now looks when we render it. So even though we've not got any sunlight and the light inside that sphere is trapped, we are getting some light. And that light, I'll just save this camera position there, is arriving from the sky. That seems appropriate, but you'll notice it's a bit tinted. And that's because it, it will re recover the colour of the sky. You'll also note, even though this isn't properly a light source, in true ambience mode it is. Because it is lit, it's affecting the inside. Not very strongly, but you can see it's having an influence. So now we'll go back and try and restore some more light to the scene. So we'll go into the sun moon and we can turn the sun back on. That gives us direct light and will give us a hard shadow. The true ambience will generate soft shadows, ambient shadows. So we've got these still quite dark shadow areas here, that you, but you can see some definition in it, and you've got these strong shadows there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and bring the light into here and, and, and reduce the sunlight. So what I'm going to do is Get, get some ambient light into the scene and I'm not going to use the any of the tricks that were formerly used in the past because that would degrade the effect. What we want is simulated light, not not cheats by letting light travel through solid objects or light that travels straight down from above without casting proper shadows. We want, to, want something as close to the way light behaves as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the image-based lighting system to provide us with ambient light, not direct light. Um, and I'm going to steal the sky that we've got, but first of all I'm going to turn the sun off as a visible object. And what this does is when we generate our HDRI from the sky by using use HDRI image, sky don't only because we only need to use half the sky, and then use the sky, and we generate it at the default resolution because we're not going to see it, it's taken the sun out of the HDRI so that won't be a light source. So we've just got the sky. I'll lower the quality, even though we're not um, using simulated light sources at this point. Lowering the quality always seems to improve render performance. And uh, we can just check that we've got true ambience optimization. So it's only going to be providing light for the true ambience system, no direct lights, and that's an important difference. And I'm going to increase the effect to 50 and see if that this preview is in direct lighting mode not true ambient so it's not always a good guide and I'm going to restore the sun and moon as a visible object because if we had any reflected objects in here then we'd still want them to show up the sun even though it's not playing a role. Another consequence of switching to image based lighting mode is that it switches the sun off automatically. Um, now we've got it visible in the scene but not actually casting light so we'll bring on its direct lighting so we've brought the direct lighting back into play now you can see now we've got quite a lot of light so these are lit up there this is these are quite bright so we've got a good uh, definition in the shadow region but I would say the direct lighting is a bit strong now so I'll go back in go to the sun and moon control here and reduce that by 50% the direct lighting there's no nothing that's uh, responding to the specular in the scene, at least not yet anyway, so I'm just leaving that as its default value because I can't really have any guide there as to what's going on. So now we'll have a look at that render. So it's, it's a more ambient render, we've got some strong shadows from the sun that give you a hard edge but there's still plenty of light in that region. So it, overall it looks a little bit bright because we can't tell at the moment that this is glowing because even though it, it is having a bit of a response there, I wanted to have a more dramatic response. So there's that to, to sort out yet. But uh, I'm going to lower the effect. And you might also notice that the, the scenes become quite blue tinted. If you wanted it to be restored to the grey effect of the original scene, lower the saturation. And that, you can see, has made it grey. But uh, Obviously, if you've got a blue sky in the background, it's not inappropriate for the light to be blue. Maybe not as blue as it was, but you can make it quite blue. But then since in this scene there's no hint that there's a background sky anyway, 
it being close to the original is what we're aiming for so an, a close version but a better version I'll keep that saturation down so now this making this glow well if you remember in the material option you can turn the shadow casting off um, and we turned it on so that would be realistically modeled that uh, that little cube over there what we'll do for this sphere is go into the material options and since it's glowing it doesn't need to cast shadows so I can turn the shadow casting off for that sphere and that will now allow the light out more direct lighting in the scene will create hard edge shadows because there's no soft shadows set on that and um, as you can see now it's lighting these rather dramatically so they're getting direct light as well a bit too dramatically perhaps so to compensate for the fact we're using different lighting methods I'm going to reduce the intensity of the light source within that sphere now and, and that will mean that it's just lighting locally or, or so seem to it's still casting across there so perhaps a, a, a final consideration then since we have the, the we're using premium effects anyway is this light source obviously all the surface is glowing should be should be casting soft shadows so if we go into the light here and change the shadow softness there so that it's very high and then remembering that when we're in premium effects we need to engage soft shadows for it to work then we can see how how that looks so there you go now the, the shadows from that won't be as intense you won't see a hard line as was appearing there and and we've got some shadow definition in there and uh, it's looking you know appropriately lit I would say it's still not a very pretty render but that's the idea now the the final thing with the Trambian's rendering is that uh, what you want to do is you want to have uh, uh, you know less of this noise in your scene so I'll change the document setup so it's a little bit smaller that will render faster then we can look at the render options and increase the race per pixel to 64 and that should reduce the noise somewhat it won't be perfect uh, but uh, you can see what a render time of two minutes so if if we doubled the rapes per pixel then you would expect the render time to, to go up by uh, by an according amount so not doubled uh, quadrupled I think well let's just turn it up let's just try it there we go oh it is doubled quadrupled so that'll be eight minutes at the highest setting available to us so let's have a look here oh, five minutes okay so it's a bit random but at that you will get the least noise of all right I'll pause the video here and we'll see how that looks righto that's the completed render and uh, as you can see it's uh, it's not got too much noise in it because it was rendered out at uh, high rates per pixel but obviously it took a little while about uh, five six minutes so this this is all very well but supposing that I didn't have a fast enough computer to render it with Trambians uh, but it can still use improved lighting method so we'll look at the situation where we could employ if we go into the IBL tab we've already generated uh, HDRI half sky dome for this so we'll use that but we'll use it in its simulated light source mode um, and so it's going to generate to start with with quality a setting of 16 16 light sources blobbed at random around that sky well at least ar arranged according to an algorithm and um, we'll see how that looks to us by switching to um, regular so we go to render options we'll switch to regular and uh, if we have a quick render at that we'll see where we are with this okay so we can see we've got some shadow bands from the light source and it's still fairly slow we're, we're going to say we're on a really slow computer so the first thing to do is to make sure we've got no light sources generating soft shadows because soft shadows really do slow things down so we'll go back to hard shadows there Ah, but we get this hard shadow so it's faster but we've got a hard shadow in this case the answer to that is to create just a few light sources uh, not too far apart then and then to select them all and edit them and if we've made th well if we made three and three five divided by three is hard so I'm gonna make two more well it's not really that hard but it's uh, we're just gonna try to keep things fairly simple here so I'll make five light sources and they've each got a fifth of the lighting capability of the original one and by moving them around and away from one another a little bit in this object 
we can we can create a kind of soft light but without having the the expense of using the soft shadows effect which really does slow the render down if, even in regular mode so that's important if we're trying to keep this efficient now we can see that the high dynamic range backdrop is in when it's direct lighting is is a much higher contrast than uh, than it is when it's in true ambience so in this case uh, to to combat that we we're going to have to well it's not it's not as strong and it's higher contrast so we can increase the value of the lighting and look in here and see where we're getting it into the shadows there we go and the other thing is by creating more light sources it will remove the shadow banding and there's more chance of it getting into the shadow regions so there you go we can we're still only looking at seconds and we've got a fairly high quality output and and this this is operating in much the same way as it did before so you can still see a, f a few of shadows so we've increased the the quality there a little bit and it's much like um, increasing the rays per pixel the, the higher the value you set in the, the higher quality the results but the slower the render speed that's just the uh, the cost essentially so you can still see these are quite dark and this shows up the, the sort of main difference between the trambience and the uh, high, uh, using a direct lighting from the high dynamic range image because this area it's it's not really seeing much of the the sky whereas in true ambience it would see probably the side of this cube which would then see the sky so it had it had release received the light indirectly whereas we've only got direct light so it, as it happens we have got an intensity control that relates to the image based lighting not the global intensity control so we can sort of use one of the old tricks here and lower the intensity just of the the light arriving from the uh, the high dynamic range image which means we still get full intensity on the sunlight but we can get a bit more light in these regions from the the backdrop so it is a little bit of a fudge but to compensate for the fact that that area can't really see the uh, much of the sky then that is one way of getting some light in there and as you can see uh, the render time is is only is only seconds on this machine so if you compare that with the true ambient render it, it's uh, it's quite a bit more efficient in terms of time so there you go that's uh, covered converting a scene to true ambience and also if, if if you didn't want to do it that way then it's much the same process you're thinking about what has been done in the scene to optimize it to then convert it to image based lighting so I hope that's helpful to you and that you enjoyed that.